Hello, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I am recording a new vlog about something that I've wanted to do for a couple of months. It's um, one on mantras or things that you repeat to yourself and you say a lot. Um, I've got Miss Iverson on my lap here. It's the uh, witching hour, the five to seven o'clock hour. So everyone wants to be held all at once. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> And this, the way that I thought about this um, vlog about mantras and things to tell yourself, it's just things you repeat inside your head or um, maybe it's quotes that you have hanging on your wall, but these are some of the ones that I say often that I've learned from family members or I've learned from some of the books I've read or some of the sermons I've listened to. Uh, I just wanted to share them because I, I use them all the time. And we were eating supper one night and I spilled milk. And I always tell the kids when they have an accident, I always say, accidents happen. I, you know, I don't discipline them. It's not worth crying over spilled milk, as the expression goes, or, you know, just getting upset over over something that spilled because it's it's not something to discipline them on. It's just accidents happen. We all pick it up together. So I spilled the milk at the supper Ooh. table. And um, Gus promptly said to me, Mommy, you spilled the milk. I said, I know, I did. And I started picking it up and I said, and what does Mommy always say? Thinking he would say back to me, accidents happen. No, no, he looks me straight in the eye and he tells me, never give up. <laughs> well, not quite what I was thinking. Uh, it's just kind of comical. So anyways, made me start thinking about these mantras and what do I keep saying and what do I want my kids to remember in the back of their brains when they, they get older about what mom always told them. Because we have things that we remember from our moms and dads and people in our life and I want them to have good ones in their life. So some of the things that I always tell myself um, or the kids is you're worth it. If I do something, get them a glass of milk or uh, tuck them in extra long at night or whatever it is, I always look them straight in the eye and I tell them you're worth it. Because I feel like as a kid, if I would have been told that more often, I may have been, um, I may have went different directions. Um, I took worth in things that weren't of worth, um, even in dating relationships, you know, I mean, I can get detailed, but I don't need to. Um, I, I just wish somebody would have told me more often you're worth it. Um, that is what God is telling us all the time, is that you're worth it. Obviously, he died for us, but um, I just think it's a good thing to tell your kids and to tell yourself that you're worth it. You're worth it. So I say that one a lot to the kids so that they know that they're, that they're worth it. Um, the other thing I do when I start to get overwhelmed, like right now, when I'm trying to make food for the holidays, when I'm bringing up a bunch of food to my folks' place, and uh, I still have orders that I'm trying to fill, and I have art applications that I'm trying to do, and I'm getting overwhelmed, I'm reminding myself, just do the next thing. And that came from my Aunt Janelle, and she homeschooled six kids. Uh, she's like super mom. And she just reminds me, she said, just do the next thing. And so I start to get overwhelmed. I think, okay, what is my eye touch telling me to do? I'll just do the next thing. And it helps calm me down and prioritize. The other mantra that I like to tell myself is, this is the best business advice I ever got. Um, my ninth year in business now, best business advice I ever got was from Dave Ramsey. And his thing was, when you're doing a small business, build small. So when I'm making big decisions for the business, like we've gotten to a stage where we've had to make bigger decisions, like federally trademarked, um, LLC, you know, all this business type stuff. I'm always telling myself in the back of my head, build small. Do I need to take that big step next? Can I afford to take that big step next? What would um, God want me to do next? And then how is that according to my mantra of build small? And it's proven true over and over and over and over again that the smaller and the slower I build, the better my base is so it doesn't fall out from underneath me. You know, if you take something big on, you take um, some big project on, you can't do it and it falls short, then you're up a creek. But if you build small and do it when you can, um, provide all the orders that you need to or whatever the scenario is, it's better. So that's very good business advice I tell myself all the time is build small. Yeah, build small, build slowly. You know, small steps, it's small bricks, slowly is what I'm trying to say. So it's build small or build slowly. The other one, I hope you guys can hear the plastic heels in the background because it's probably my favorite part of the day is we're into plastic heels right now and it's just comforting. <laughs> the other one I always tell myself is um, it's faith over fear, which is uh, difficult for me. I have to keep reminding myself of that. You know, like I have a fear that I won't get all the orders out or I have a fear that I won't have enough stock for whatever show, um, or I have a f different fears for my children, and that's not fair to God, and that is making God smaller than he is, because he's bigger than we can imagine. If I had faith instead of fear, I would choose and make decisions differently. So choose faith over fear. 
that's a good just life lesson faith not fear and when I do make decisions based on faith and not fear, I do grow bigger. When I decided that, you know what, I'm going to have enough stock, when we started really um, bulking up our sales about three or four years ago, and me letting go of having all this fear of, I don't know if I'll have enough, and just go, you know what, if I don't have enough, I'll just take orders. I'm going to live by faith that God has brought me to this for a purpose. That's when the business exploded. When I really let go of the fear of what I couldn't provide or how much I really could manage and do, that's when the business exploded. So definitely, definitely faith over fear. Um, and then the other thing that I always tell myself is we make good money. Pardon our little background noise here. Um, you know, like in the scenario when you say, you don't have to say I am rich. You know, a lot of positive things say I am, I am rich or whatever. You don't need to say that. But if you say I make good money, money is good. It doesn't mean that you're making lots and lots of money. It doesn't mean that you're poor. It just means the money is good. And it's just a positive way of reinforcing um, what you're doing um, financially. So I, I always say, and my husband gets tired of me saying it, we make good money. Because we always heard as kids, you know, that that, was, that meant that we were rich. No, not necessarily. It just means the money that you bring in, that you've been blessed with, that God asks you to flow in you and out of you is good. We make good money. And the money that we do make is honest and it is good. So that's a good one to keep telling yourself and watch your sales increase as you say we make good money. So those are the mantras. You're worth it. Just do the next thing. Build small or build slowly. Faith over fear. And we make good money. All the mantras, not all, because I have a ton. Um, I'm kind of a quotes freak, but um, those are some of the ones that are that rung a bell to me that I wanted to keep saying. And um, so there's new things for the new year as far as business. I'm going to design two new purses is my goal. I don't know what months they'll be introduced, but they're usually introduced in the winter months when we're a little bit slower. And um, these ones will have zipper options. And I have tons of new fabric designs. My graph designer that I work with is probably going nuts because I have all these new uh, color combinations and designs in my head. So that will be exciting to get those out and we'll start submitting those so you can see them. We also have a t-shirt competition going on on Facebook. So if you'd like to design a t-shirt for RSD, I would love that because we want to wear our t-shirts. And that's it. So happy new year. I can't wait to bring in 2013 because 2012 is a year I will never forget. And that being said, we are officially a federally trademarked company. So I can put the little TM next to all my things and um, that's pretty exciting. Kind of a rite of passage for me. So yeah, until we see you again, happy new year.